I would also like to say Happy Mother's Day. All right, happy to, to our moms, to your mothers out there, even if your children are fur babies, uh, you're a mother too. I will have to give you this quick story. Uh, two years ago, my daughter, who's grown, uh, she has a serious boyfriend that she's been with for years. She sent me a text message in the middle of the day. She said, I, I'm excited. I can't wait to tell you. I'll call you later, but I had to let you know now you're going to be a grandpa. And I was in the middle of a work meeting at the time, and I was like, I'm just gonna put the phone down. I'm not even gonna respond. I'm not ready to be Grandpa Bill just yet. Uh, so I, I finally got the courage. My brain was racing. I texted her back, and I said, it's a cat, isn't it? And she said, yes. <laughs> so she had just gotten a cat. And uh, you know what? You, you reap what you sow. I raised some smart alecky children. Uh, <laughs> which is exactly how I was to them as they were growing up, and now I completely regret my fatherhood skills. But it's not about me, it's about um, all of you mothers out there. Congratulations, and thank you for spending time with us today, and I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow of recognition. About our uh, agenda for today, I'm gonna start off with some party news, let you know what's going on here within our party, as well as some news of interest. Then we'll have a candidate for school board, Mr. Deshaun Williams. He'll come up and introduce himself. By the time he is done, we hope to have Representative Crystal Matthews, candidate for U.S. Senate. She is on her way. She has texted me. She said she hit some traffic, uh, but she will make it here by 10, so we'll have her. Then we'll have our Volunteer of the Month Award, which is always a lot of fun. Finally, an open forum for those uh, who wish to get some thoughts off their mind. So I uh, want to turn it over to you and see what you're thinking. So let's start with some updates about our party. We had a wonderful Easter egg hunt over at uh, East Cambridge Park um, the, the other week, or West Cambridge Park the other week, and it was put on by Miss Tawanda Spearman. Tawanda, is she here yet? Hi Tawanda, thank you very much for putting on that Easter egg hunt. We had several dozen neighborhood kids show up, their families show up. Miss Tawana went all out. She brought toys, she brought crafts, she brought goodies. Uh, we had plastic eggs and candy. We distributed them all over the park. The kids ran around like crazy, picking up everything they could find. Uh, Miss Mamie Green ran some games, uh, but what was one of those? Pin the cotton tail on the rabbit? All right, she even did that to me um, and wrapped me up in a blindfold and made me pin a tail on that cotton, you know, that cotton tail. And it was, it was really a, a lot of fun. So it was a beautiful day and we thank you for that. And it was good to have a Democratic Party event sponsored like this. Uh, I thought it was a one-time event, but Miss Wanda already said our first annual. So I guess it's on the books for next year. It was so successful, we are definitely going to keep it up. We also had a visit to the Project Hope Foundation. How many here are familiar with this service? But they do a wonderful job in this community working with uh, autistic children, their families, and the schools that support them. Uh, it's kind of a hidden gem of a building right behind the Chick-fil-A drive through A little bit up on the hill is this, I think it's the old Marywood School, I think it's what it's called, but they've repurposed it for Project Hope. And we have an article about what we saw on our website along with a list of articles or a list of items that they need, anything ranging from cleaning supplies to board games and the like. Uh, you cannot go through that facility and not walk out smiling nonstop for the, the rest of the day. Just absolute, everybody there loves what they do. The children love the, the, the teachers and the aides they get to work with, and it's just a wonderful program we have, and uh, we wanted to make sure we gave them some recognition and some support. Uh, and we did, by the way. We provided several pizzas to the staff, so they got to enjoy lunch on the Democratic Party that day. Uh, and then we also picked up some board games and other supplies for them to enjoy. Uh, so thank you uh, to Project Hope for all that they do. We have another activity coming up. Uh, as the Greenwood Democrats, we have a little subgroup called the Community Care Movement. And we've started just over a year ago making sure that we're out in the community doing the deeds, um, being good stewards of our community, showing that we care and not just saying it. Our next activity is May 21st, two weeks from today. 
the Democrats have signed up with the Greenwood Miracle League, uh, and that's where they are able to bring all students or all children with special needs out to play a little bit of baseball uh, on a specially designed field. Every child gets partnered up with a buddy, and it's just a fun morning of just glorious outside activity. Uh, so we've got a chance to do it. We have a sign-up sheet on our table back there if you would like to be part of this. Now, we need to get 15 to 20 volunteers, and that's a lot. I know when we do road cleanups, we've only been able to get three to five. Other volunteer efforts have been more successful, but for this one to work well, we need 15 to 20. If you have that Saturday morning available, we would love your presence. Now, it's not like real baseball where you're running around right field catching balls, okay? This is slow paced, uh, so all of us, if we're able to walk, we can do it. I uh, would love to have a great turnout there um, and show that we care, and we certainly do. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to partake in. Another thing on our calendar to look forward to in less than a month, or just over a month away, is the South Carolina Democratic Party Convention. Our delegate slate is full, so thank you to all who have signed up to be delegates to this event. Uh, I'll be reaching out to you uh, late May, early June to coordinate our activities and give you some more info, but it's open for everybody. You don't have to be in a delegate to attend. Anybody can come in off the street. It is a fun event if you've never been yourself. It is a blast to go to these conventions. You get to meet all of the statewide candidates, the, those who are running for governor, those who are running for Senate. Uh, you get to meet them in person. You get to have some good food. You get to hear some great speeches. You get to be re-energized. Plus, the delegates get to vote on new rules and uh, new motions. It's just a good expression of democracy in our state. I encourage all to attend. But prior to that Saturday, that Friday night before, is something called the Blue uh, Palmetto Dinner. And this is a fancy suit and tie, fancy dress dinner to celebrate and uh, do a little bit of fundraising for the state Democratic Party. Um, this month, we have Dick Riley as the, or this, at this meeting is Dick Riley as the special guest speaker. Has anybody here ever met Dick Riley? This man is immortal, and I'm looking forward to meeting him myself. Now, it is a fundraiser, fancy dinner. Tickets are $150. You can go to scdp.org and purchase a ticket. If you do so, give me a holler, and maybe we can make sure we get a table together. Uh, but it is a fun event. I've been to these Blue Palmetto dinners before. It's very good food, and you get to meet a lot of good people. But the Saturday event is free. There is no entrance. Uh, fee to walk into the convention itself. Now I want to talk politics a little bit. Um, there have been some things that have transpired in the past couple of weeks. Uh, if you've been uh, attuned to the news or followed your social medias, you've seen some news come through that was extremely disheartening. Uh, the first thing I wanted to lead off with, and there's just so much we could talk about, uh, but, but quite honestly, you can't cover everything, so I picked three items. The first item had to do with the Compassionate Care Act. Now this is using medical marijuana, the most restrictive proposals in all of the land, controlled every which way to Sunday, uh, can only be dispensed by licensed pharmacists, no smoking, it's, it's, it's not a, a smoking action. There's just a hundred restrictions put on that parents of suffering children, that veterans who are suffering as well, anybody going through pain management, they would gladly go through these restrictions that were offered in order to acquire the, um, the medicine that they need. Uh, our state senator, Billy Garrett, voted against it when it came up in the Senate, and Representative McCravey sabotaged it when it finally came up to the House. And apparently there was enough support. It passed the Senate, by the way. The Senate, a very conservative Senate, said, okay, we'll let this go through. In fact, this bill was authored by a Senate Republican. So it got the support there. The House was going to be tight. Of course, all of the Democrats were in favor of it, but the belief was there that enough Republicans were as well. It didn't even come to a vote because Representative McCravey, who led the charge against it, by the way, he didn't just issue a vote. He stood up and said, I will lead the charge against this bill use some what, what somebody called legal hokey pokey to prevent it from even going to vote 
and for all intents and purposes, uh, it's dead. Now, there's still one week of legislation, and if somebody pulls a miracle out of the hat, wonderful, but for now it's dead, and that effort was led by our Greenwood legislation. So I want you to know this, and I want you to share this information. This isn't something that we should keep just within the four walls of this building. We need to let people know what's going on, because there's enough conservatives out there who don't support those actions that were taken last week that are very disappointed. So I know we're disappointed, many are as well, and we need to make sure that he is labeled as the one that was uncompassionate, didn't care, and didn't act when the opportunity arose to relieve suffering. Are you with me on this? Yeah. Are you hearing this? There's just some basic fundamental human decency that's lacking uh, in some of these actions, and I, and I just don't get it. Uh, how many have heard about the, uh, the name of uh, Michigan Senator Mallory McMorrow? Has that name come up? You know what, I'm glad enough of you haven't heard her name. Uh, she is going to be a star on the national stage in the not too distant future. Um, and, and she is a state senator in Michigan. Uh, she provided a statement in front of her house uh, not in front of her personal house, but in front of the legislation there um, in Michigan that was just so moving and what people are calling an example of how do you fight back against some of the crazy allegations that are lobbed against us. So I'm going to play a four-minute video for you now that shows exactly what she said. Thank you, Mr. President. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd district had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. So I sat on it for a while wondering why me? And then I realized because I am the biggest threat to your hollow, hateful scheme. Because you can't claim that you are targeting marginalized kids in the name of, quote, parental rights if another parent is standing up to say no. So then what? Then you dehumanize and marginalize me. You say that I'm one of them. You say she's a groomer. She supports pedophilia. She wants children to believe that they were responsible for slavery and to feel bad about themselves because they're white. Well, here's a little bit of background about who I really am. Growing up, my family was very active in our church. I sang in the choir. My mom taught CCD. One day, our priest called a meeting with my mom and told her that she was not living up to the church's expectations and that she was disappointing. My mom asked why. Among other reasons, she was told it was because she was divorced and because the priest didn't see her at mass every Sunday. So where was my mom on Sundays? She was at the soup kitchen with me. My mom taught me at a very young age that Christianity and faith was about being part of a community, about recognizing our privilege and blessings and doing what we can to be of service to others, especially people who are marginalized, targeted, and who had less often unfairly. I learned that service was far more important than performative nonsense like being seen in the same pew every Sunday or writing Christian in your Twitter bio and using that as a shield to target and marginalize already marginalized people. I also stand on the shoulders of people like Father Ted Hesburgh, the longtime president of the University of Notre Dame, who was active in the civil rights movement, who recognized his power and privilege as a white man, a faith leader, and the head of an influential and well-respected institution and who saw black people in this country being targeted and discriminated against and beaten and reached out to lock arms with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he was alive, when it was unpopular and risky and marching alongside them to say, we've got you to offer protection and service and allyship to try to right the wrongs and fix injustice in the world. So who am I? I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom who knows that the very notion that learning about slavery or redlining or systemic racism somehow means that children are being taught to feel bad or hate themselves because they are white is absolute nonsense. No child alive today is responsible for slavery. No one in this room is responsible for slavery. But each and every single one of us bears responsibility for writing the next chapter of history. Each and every single one of us decides what happens next and how we respond to history and the world around us. 
We are not responsible for the past. We also cannot change the past. We can't pretend that it didn't happen or deny people their very right to exist. I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom. I want my daughter to know that she is loved, supported, and seen for whoever she becomes. I want her to be curious, empathetic, and kind. People who are different are not the reason that our roads are in bad shape after decades of disinvestment or the, that healthcare costs are too high or that teachers are leaving the profession. I want every child in this state to feel seen, heard, and supported, not marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, and Christian. We cannot let hateful people tell you otherwise to scapegoat and deflect from the fact that they are not doing anything to fix the real issues that impact people's lives. And I know that hate will only win if people like me stand by and let it happen. So I want to be very clear right now. Call me whatever you want. I hope you brought in a few dollars. I hope it made you sleep good last night. I know who I am. I know what faith and service means and what it calls for in this moment. We will not let hate win. That was absolutely amazing, wasn't it? You know, we, we sometimes, you know, try not to be conf confrontational. We like to avoid uncomfortable situations. Not this woman, not me. Right? I'm all for the confrontation. I'm all for making things uncomfortable for the other people who are interested in discriminating and marginalizing and making people feel bad for who they are. No, that's not who we are. So I, I use that as an example. Now, I'll never be able to match her fury and her messaging. She's incredible. But I hope that inspires us to say, hey, you know what? Not only is it okay to do so, we need to be doing so. So there's hope out there with leaders like uh, 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 Mallory uh, McMorrow, um, her name's just so tough to say, Mallory McMorrow. We're going to know it soon enough. I, I sense huge things for her on the national stage in the not too distant future. So I'm going to leave with one last political topic here. And I think this is the one that's dominated all of the headlines recently. The Supreme Court memo that was leaked uh, with a draft of a decision that, you know, I think we feared that Roe versus Wade was going to be chipped away at, this actually does completely away with it. And I've read so many articles on this. Uh, it's, uh, it's obsessive to be able to read the legal scholars throughout the nation dive into Judge Alito's uh, draft decision where he quoted sources to support his opinion that also mentioned witchcraft as being illegal. Like that's how far deep he went in his opinion to pull sources that mentioned witchcraft. Uh, sources that mentioned uh, a supply of infants, you know, in the nation. That's a quote right from the decision. It's just insane language that says, you know what, if the right is not explicitly stated in the US Constitution, then it's not guaranteed. Which is completely contrary to one of the amendments of the Constitution, which says, Rights that aren't explicitly here does not mean it's not not a right, you know, and I'm paraphrasing a bit. So it's just a bad decision up and down. Uh, and it's going to be fought by people who are 100 times smarter than myself, and, and I support them 100%. And we're going to see where this actually ends up. I think June is when this is going to be deliberated in a final um, statement and decision made by the Supreme Court. But one thing that got me and has got a lot of other members um, of, of the nation as a whole, is the absolute dishonesty with which a lot of the members of the Supreme Court were able to weasel their way onto the Supreme Court. Every one of them stated during their Supreme Court vetting process that precedent was precedent. You know, they were asked explicitly about this decision. They said, hey, we're not here to overturn precedent. That's, that's important to the sanctity of Supreme Court. Uh, what I want to play for you now is a minute and a half cut of these Supreme Court justices' own words as they were going through their own hearings on the subject. I believe the Constitution protects the right to privacy. And I have no reason or agenda to prejudge the issue. 
Roe versus Wade is a, an important precedent of the Supreme Court. It was decided in 1973. It has been challenged on a number of occasions, and the Supreme Court has reaffirmed the decision. When a decision is challenged and it is reaffirmed, that strengthens its value. Roe versus Wade, decided in 1973, is a precedent of the United States Supreme Court. It has been reaffirmed, so a good judge will consider it as precedent of the United States Supreme Court, worthy as treatment of precedent like any other. As a judge, it is an important precedent of the Supreme Court. By it, I mean Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey. Been reaffirmed many times. Casey is precedent on precedent. I do not believe that Brett Kavanaugh will overturn Roe v. Wade. Precedents are overturned all the time. They aren't overturned all the time. More he views precedent not just as a legal doctrine, but as rooted in our Constitution. Neil Gorsuch, for whom you voted, don't you think he's probably going to vote to overturn Roe v. Wade if given the chance? I actually don't. Roe is not a super precedent because calls for its overruling have never ceased, but that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. Nothing like hearing it in their own words, is it? Right? And, and you know what? This is something that's bothered me about politics, uh, mostly from the other side, is that any pretense to the truth, any pretense to standing by what you've said in the past, uh, you know, Lindsey Graham is the biggest example of that. Uh, it, it, it's that what has really inspired me to take a shot at running for office. And as you'll see back on the table, many of you already know my slogan. Who knows my slogan by now? Let's say it together. Facts matter. Honesty matters. Truth matters. To me, if those things don't matter to you, then sit down and shut up. All right, that's just my humble opinion. And when the highest level of judicial review in the nation is on record lying through their teeth just to get appointed, ladies and gentlemen, our nation is in trouble. And the only way we get ourselves out of this mess, the only thing that's going to work is to vote them out of office and put in reasonable, rational people who do evidence-based decision-making, who do listen and judge based on the facts, who are honest with you and who will tell you the truth, even if it doesn't work to their advantage. So how do we get out of this and how do we elect people to office? Well, we support our candidates. And that's where this comes into play. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to announce for the first time a fundraiser for myself and for U.S. Senate candidate Catherine Fleming Bruce. She's coming into town next Saturday, uh, and that would be May 14th. Thank you to, again, our hosts, at, uh, uh, Ken and Robert Headley Downs. They're letting their house be open to us. Uh, so we're going to be there for a meet and greet. We'll have some food. And we're also going to attempt some karaoke. If you can see the screen, that is an attempt at me singing. It is ugly, ladies and gentlemen. I do not have a crooner's voice. The Lord did not bless me with vocal pipes. So I will get even with him and use them that Saturday. <laughs> And anybody else who wishes to join in that effort, uh, feel free to come on out starting at 6.30 until we close. Uh, it is a fundraiser. We do want to continue our campaigns to get our message out there, to pay for postcards, pay for flyers, pay for mailings, things like that. Uh, but it's also meant to have a good time and get to know the candidates. More information will be forthcoming, but expect phone calls during the week. Expect uh, some more stuff online. If you are not following us on the social medias, it's a good time to get involved. It really is. The other if way you can make a difference, of course, is voting. Primary election day is coming up uh, just over a month from now, June 14th, that's a Tuesday. May 13th, next week, is the last day to register to vote in order to participate, and in-person absentee voting opens on May 16th. So we have that election day coming up. So let's get out there and get out to vote, get to know our candidates.